Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're starting a new project, probably a couple video series, but we're making a very special box and we've made this out of Rough Sawn Black Walnut. It's the first time I've ever worked with Black Walnut. It's the second time I've ever hand cut dovetails, but this box is going to end up being something pretty special. So stay tuned, find out what this box is going to be, who it's for, and how we made it using only hand tools. Today we've got a very special project. In front of me, I have a one inch thick, seven foot long slab of black walnut. I got this wood from a local sawmill in Dryden, Michigan, Dryden Hardwoods. If you are looking for hardwoods, I really suggest giving them a call. Um, you can find them on Facebook and set up an appointment, go out and check, out, check them out. I, I love their selection, their pricing was amazing. Um, I bought a bunch of cherry for an upcoming project, some real thick slab cherry, and then I got two slabs of this black walnut. One's kind of over in the corner, it's more live edgy. Um, this one was really cool, it was really pretty. Um, it has two kind of crutches in it. One I feel like is kind of going towards the stump of the tree, and the other is going towards kind of the, the uh, apex of the tree where it starts to limb out. Um, and at both of those points are some beautiful, beautiful wood grain, swirled grain. Um, this is the first time I've ever worked with black walnut before. Um, so I'm a little nervous to work in those sections of that wild crazy grain because I don't know if my plane skills and chisel skills are there yet. So what I'm going to be working on is the center of it. It's kind of the most straightest grain. There's no knots in that. Um, we're building a box today, but it's kind of special. It's, it's a special box and I'll explain that in the end what it's used for, but it's um, made for something very specific. So that being said, let's get into this and figure out how to make a box out of this slab of wood. Okay, so this is the slab. It is just under seven feet long. It's roughly yeah, about just about 13 inches wide. Um, the box that we are making today is going to be six by 12 by six. Um, so it's gonna be six inches high, six inches deep, 12 inches long. Um, I am planning to dovetail this box. Um, I don't know what I'm doing for a bottom yet. And then I don't know I might do some other tricks. I also have a slab of ash that I cut on my chainsaw mill um, a couple months ago that is pretty well dried. This wood here is roughly um, anywhere from like five to, I think the highest I saw was like 8% down here, but I'm working mainly in here. Everything around here has been like five to 6% moisture in this wood. So for a barn store, garage store wood, that is really pretty good. So, um, yeah, it, it's rough sawn. It's not the straightest, but it doesn't look like it has a ton of twist in it. Um, we're gonna cut out a three foot long section out of this, or a little bit longer than three foot. We only need six inches, but I don't wanna get too much of, um, of the sapwood in it. I want it to be fairly consistent in color, so I'm gonna go more in the heartwood, get rid of the sapwood, or I might use Honestly, if I can make it work nice, I might use the sapwood and glue it and panel it together for a bottom and make kind of a cool bottom out of it. So we'll see um, how I'm gonna do that. But to get this going, this is our only board, right? So that we can really use uh, for this project. And this project has a lot of meaning to me. So, I'm gonna take my time with it. This project might take me a week or two to do. Um, I'm gonna go kind of slower than normal on this because A, I don't wanna make a mistake, but um, B, I want to make sure that the final outcome of this is the best I can do. With my set of skills where they're at right now, this is gonna be the best box I've ever built. I know it, I can feel it. So, um, the slab is an inch thick. By the time I get done planing it, it'll probably be, probably be closer to three quarters of an inch, which is perfect thickness for what we want. I may go even thinner than that. 
once I get the pieces kind of cut out, I'll see. I might go down to like five eighths, uh, or not five eighths. Um, I may go down to like a half inch thick, maybe. I don't know if that might be too thin. I do want a little bit of weight to this box. Um, so we'll see. Shooting for three quarters of an inch. So it's a lot of talk, but let's get started. Basically, I'm gonna do is cut off the end out of this and save that. I'm not throwing any of this wood away because this is, it's too beautiful to throw it away. So I'm gonna cut the end of this off and I'm gonna cut it right around here, which is around the three foot mark. This is pretty clear through here. There's a pretty significant knot down here that I'd like to avoid if possible. And there's a little one right in here, but I think that shouldn't give us too much of a problem. So to build this box, I've also added some new tools to the arsenal. I recently spent a bunch of money I had been saving for this project specifically. I was like, nope, this is what I'm spending it on. So I went and got some new saws. Um, I went to Crown Saws. They're made still in Sheffield, England. Really good quality, really good saws. I bought their dovetailing saw. I'm not thrilled with the handle, but that's just how they are now. Um, so eventually in the future, I might reshape these handles a little bit just to be a little more comfortable for me. But I did get their dovetail saw. I got a nice panel saw. Um, and then finally I got a um, rip saw. So this is like four and a half teeth per inch or something like that. It's, it's super aggressive, but I figured for ripping down this larger stock like this, it'll be perfect. Um, and if I do need to do um, longer rip cuts that are more fine, I still have my Japanese saws and stuff to do that with. So these are the new saws I got. Um, so far, I like them a lot. They do come with like a lacquer on the blade that gets a little sticky. So I took a little mineral spirits on a rag, wiped all that lacquer off, and then oiled all the, all the blades with just some lightweight oil. So they are cutting amazing now. So these are the saws we're using for this project at least, probably some others, but that's what we're gonna start with. So let's, I'm gonna mark this off and get that bottom cut off and then get this down to a workable state because right now it's kind of big and bulky and we need it something a little more workable. Okay, I am out of breath, but we cut through it. We're just over 39 inches. Um, I'm sure it's not the saw. The saw is very flat, very straight, and very true. I think it's just my amateur saw skills, but this cut went pretty good, stayed on our line. Ow. But this cut here, uh, I got like three inches in and all of a sudden it just started taking off on me. And by the time we got down here, we got almost three quarters of an inch of off of our line. So I don't know what I did, but I just stuck with it and wrote it out. It's fine. Cause I overshot the distance we need by like three inches to give us extra room just in case, because I'm sure more issues like this are going to occur throughout the project.
but we are at six and a half inches. This is gonna be our board in here. So that gets rid of this entire crack and that gets rid of this crack here. And we know the other side of the board is all solid good wood. So that'll be the most stable part. It's all heartwood. There's not much sap wood. There might be a little kiss in here of a little bit lighter wood, but that'll be fine. Um, so, and I'm gonna try to save the sides of these for a future project where I can flip it around and do like that resin stuff that everybody loves doing and make a cool like cutting board or something out of it. So I'm gonna have to put this in my vise to rip cut because I don't have a saw bench that is low enough to rip cut all these. Um, and it's probably way overkill for my vise that I have, but it's all I have. So I'm gonna put it in the vise and just a couple inches at a time all the way down. Maybe that'll help me even cut it a little straighter, so. The new year is coming up soon and it's about this time of year that everybody starts thinking god i'm fat and i really need to lose a bunch of weight and you start thinking like oh man what what diet plan am i going to go on to lose weight there's atkins and keto and all kinds of different diets may i suggest Oops, wrong one. May I suggest, if you're looking for a good diet, is go down to your local hardwood supplier. If you don't have one near you, go to Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever and ask for the hardest piece of wood they have. Um, and then buy a cross-cut saw and a rip saw. And take that piece of wood home and cut it and just sit there and saw on the damn thing for like an hour. And I promise you, keep that up, do that once a day. Just cut a line down, rip it down. And the next day, move over a half inch, rip it down. Next day, half inch, rip it down. And, and do that for like a week. And I guarantee you, you'll be down like 100 pounds, whether you want to be or not. That was a workout and a half. We now have our board. Um, if you notice this side, it went eh, decent. It's not bad. It's got a little waves in it, but it's not terrible. This side, however, did not go as well. Uh, I kept, kept trying to go off my line. I never went under the line, so that's good. I kept stopping myself and I had to do like little relief cuts to like get the saw back straight. The saw, so the crown saw, I think it's just too aggressive for me to be cutting vertically. I think that's something more for like, I need to be like at a saw bench pushing weight down on it. So I switched to the Japanese pull saw and that started cutting much better, but because the blade is so thin on those, it wants to follow the grain, I think. So it started like following the curves and we're like start curving out. So I had to keep stopping and then I would like cross cut, reset the saw and go back down. It was a big process, but we got it there. We're gonna plane it straight now. We've got a lot more planing to do, but this is gonna be our board. Okay, I have been planing and planing and planing this. I got the five out, I got the four out. This thing is a friggin' Cadillac, but I finally have three sides, square, flat, flush. This has taken a long, long time, but um we finally got it flat there's some real squirrely grain even though it's pretty flat i don't know if this is just a um a product of walnut i've never worked at walnut before but i'm getting a little tear out here and there but i'm not too worried about that it's early on in the project and i can i'm sure i can just feather that out and sand it or if i have to sand it at the end i will but Finally have three sides square. I had a ton of twist in this. Sorry I didn't film any of that, but I was, uh, I've was i been at it for like the past hour and a half. Um, I've got bags and bags and bags of shavings. We're down to, uh, let me see, what kind of thickness are we at? Let's see, we're at, wow, we're exactly at three quarters of an inch. 
So that's pretty cool. So we're at three quarters of an inch thick. Um, I think we're in good shape. So I'm going to scribe a line at six inches and cut this like weird, um, you know, hack job I did of a rip cut off. Try to rip that down into something a little more um, clean. And then, uh, you know what? No, I'm not going to do that. I think what I'm gonna do is cut my pieces out of this first and then I can do a more controlled rip cut on small sections, right? Um, and then I can plane those down to, to height. So I'm gonna get started on that next. I'm gonna mark all these out um, with my cross cuts so I can get my pieces out of this board and then um, I'll go from there. So yeah, haven't even thought about a bottom yet. Um, I don't know, uh, I was gonna use these off cuts um, I might still be able to I'm not sure um, we'll see when we get to that right now I just want a, I want to get to a point of getting a square so learning lessons on this guy so let's uh, I'll keep at it <laughs> So I've got the side pieces completely processed. They are probably the best I've ever done as far as stock prep. They are both, I mean, from the side, this almost looks like, like if you put them flush up against each other, like that looks like one solid piece right now. But they're two. Um, super, super happy with how this is turning out so far. I've got everything squared and it's like dead on square. All six sides are just perfectly flat. I don't know that I've ever gotten a piece of stock this perfect before. So this is taken though, um, to get to this point so far hours of work, which is kind of crazy, but I'm going super, super slow. Like my plane is set to just whisper thin shavings cause I don't want to go uh, too far. I'm having a hard time reading the grain too on some of these pieces. Like um, there are some pretty cool little swirls and stuff in here. So like the grain direction will be going one way and then all of a sudden it goes another. So I'm getting a little bit of tear out, but um, only on one piece. So, or a little couple spots. I figure I can sand that out later because um, the plane, I don't know, my, my planing skills are, aren't there yet. So I still have to do the, uh, the front and the back. So I'm going to prep these probably in the next few over the next day or two and get all this stuff to six, six square ready to go. And then I'll start, um, start moving on to laying out my dovetails and stuff. I'm skipping a lot of this stuff for you guys, just cause I don't want the, the video to be two hours long and most of it just me planing stuff. So I'm trying to get it to six square and then I'll, you know, I'll start getting into more detail for you guys. So. Okay, so I have been planing and planing and planing and planing and planing, but I have, all this, three boards perfectly. I mean, perfect, as close as I can get it. I cannot see visible light anywhere. Six square, I've, I've never, I'm, I'm kind of proud of myself. I like, I, this isn't really like a big deal. Like you can go to a Home Depot and buy this off the shelf and be like, oh, that's three quarter inch board, what? But like to take it from a rough sawn slab to this, like I'm proud of myself because I've never done that yet before. So I have perfect, like they all line up perfect. Like you can almost, I posted something on my socials about it. Like from the eye sitting here looking, I don't know how the camera picks it up, but it almost looks like one solid block of wood. Um, it's how like perfect I have it. You can't even see the seams between them on the on the side grain here. So I mean, other than the the there's like a slightest little line where the two side pieces meet. So just super happy. So stock is prepped. Um, now we can move on to um, actually building the box.
So what I'm doing now is just kind of going through the pieces and determining what I want to be my outside, my kind of show face, where I want my top. Um, just looking at the grain and um, how it's kind of diff different ones are laid out. Um, I want, you know, obviously the nicest side of the board to be facing out. And then I'm just going to number them. Um, I'm doing all this on the outside faces, so when I'm done, it's easy to just plane all this stuff off. Um, so A to A, B is going to B, C is going to C, and I'm doing it far, well, this one I didn't, but I'm trying to do it far enough away from the edge so that when we cut our dovetails, we don't um, cut those off. Which way do I want my tails to be? Man, that's freaking, mm, it looks good. Okay, sorry, I'm geeking out here. All right, so I want the tails to be showing on the front, or do I want the tails to be showing on the sides? I would say the front, right? The front's the showpiece. So I would want the tails to be showing on the front. Cause I mean, there's no, um, I don't have to worry. This isn't a drawer. So I'm not having to work to rely on the dovetails for like structural integrity to like, for like a pulling motion or anything. It's basically just going to be a sitting box. So um, the dovetails come down to just like decoration, right? So yeah, I want to put my tails on the long piece and my pins on the short piece. Got it marked out. I'm gonna mark the other side because I'm just not confident enough in my cuts. Um, but we're gonna have three tails. So one, two, three. Um, that'll be, I think that looks good. I went back and forth with this for like, I don't know, 20 minutes trying to figure out the perfect tail size and stuff and what looked good. So. I settled on three. I was going to go with four for a minute, but they seemed too small to me for the size of the piece, so I wanted bigger tails. So I opted for three kind of larger tails. thought about two for a half a minute, but I was like, eh, I don't want two. Two seems not enough. So we've got all of our, our dovetails kind of marked out. I got them marked with a knife. I've got all the waist marked to, to cut off so that I don't mess up both sides. I've got a gauge line down at the bottom to my saw depth line, which matches the thickness of its adjoining piece. I can't prep anymore. I've got to cut it. I'm like super nervous too, because you know, it's taken so long to get to this point, but you got to do it. So let's just cut it and see. Thank <laughs> you. 
is the first time I've worked with hardwood before, and uh, I get why they call it hardwood now. Holy cow, is this stuff hard? <laughs> but um, I'm really pleased. I'm taking. I'm going so slow. I don't know why. I know the tails are supposed to be basically just cut them on the saw, and then whatever's whatever the saw gives you, you transfer over to your pins. But I don't know. I'm just. I want perfection so I'm like paring just perfectly down to all my knife walls and uh, and trying to get it perfect so and I'm putting it on the square so like this chopping this tail or this pin hole out I guess um, took me like a half an hour <laughs> so I'm just like going so slow with it like I've, I've got like just a small half inch chisel and I'm like popping off little bits and working my way back. I cut the, the bulk of it out with the coping saw, but uh, you know, I, I still left like so much material just cause I was nervous about getting too close. I guess I could have cut more with the saw and would have helped the, the chiseling process, but I didn't know how this was gonna chisel. So I basically started on the outside here and started like working my way back, so. I'm gonna chop this one and then I'm probably gonna be done for at least for a few hours. I've gotta go in and work and do some other stuff. Um, but I wanna at least get these pins chopped and cut today and then, or the tails I mean, get these tails done today and then um, maybe tonight I can come out and cut the adjoining pins for at least this side and start getting, getting our first 90 degree angle here kinda of going. good as I can do. Hopefully we don't have any gaps. We'll see. But I'm pretty happy with that. It's um, everything's clean. We're level. Flush square 90 with the sides. Square all the way across all the pins. Everything is looking good. We're even trying to see or flush and flat across all of our tails. Yeah. So it came out last night and started chopping away on the pin board. Didn't film any of it, but here's the result. Um, it's basically the same thing as chopping the, the tails. I've done other videos on, on chopping dovetails, but um, it's not the point of this one to teach you guys how, but essentially um, I've got the first set of dovetails done. Um, I'm a little, 
a little bit proud on this side, um, but that's fine, totally fine, because I can plane that. I'm smooth, pretty much smooth right here. And down here, it gets the tail gets a little bit proud, maybe, maybe a thirty-second of an inch, um, just enough to kind of catch your fingernail on. So I'll plane that smooth and plane this side smooth too. This is all pretty much flush on this side, um, just a hair over on the outside there. So again, nothing really major to worry about i can plane all that smooth and it'll be totally fine so pretty thrilled with this so far if i put a square up to it i'm dead on 90 degrees um nice and square so just got to do this three more times and we'll have our kind of box shape um still still haven't put any thought into a bottom but it sits flush it sits flat there's no wobble in it so so far it's doing pretty well um, I'm going to cut the other tails in the other side of this board now and do the other side piece. And then, um, when I'm done with that, I'll do the back or, uh, the front. So let's get started on that. I'm going to try to get at least one more set of tails done today. Um, kind of a slow process, but I've got a bunch of other things going on right now. So I'm doing this when I have, you know, an extra 20, 30 minutes here. These, this set of tails, I'm not gonna lie, this probably all in all took like two hours to do. Um, mainly because I was like seriously micro pairing. I would fit a little and then just come in with a chisel and just shave off, you know, micro thousandths of an inch off of the, off the pin board, try it again, do it again, try it again, shave it again, try it again. So, um, I just wanted a perfect fit and I could not be happier with the fit. There's, there's nothing I can't even fit. There's a little line there. I could barely fit a fingernail in there. That'll swell up as soon as I glue it. You're not going to see anything. Um, and there's one tiny little spot on this pin that, um, where I dropped the board at one point kind of rounded it over a little bit. I think when I glue that, that'll swell back up and be fine. But if not, it's so small that um, I don't think it's noticeable, but I can always try to shove a little sawdust in there too when I'm gluing it up and then it should disappear. So not too worried about that. So I noticed when I put these two end pieces on the uh, back piece that this piece here had just a corner where it just dipped down maybe maybe a sixteenth of an inch, 32nd of an inch maybe we'll say. 
um, in this one corner and I'm not having that because that uh, when I go to put everything together will show a gap so I am now planing I've got both of these pieces in the vice sister together flush on the bottom um, and I'm planing the end grain down so that to the lowest level which is going to make my sides just a hair a bit shorter but I'm okay with that I'd rather it be a little bit shorter than um, you know have a gap also it wouldn't wouldn't sit flush so I'm going real slow with it I've got just a little whisper feather you know kind of shavings off this because I don't want to have any tear out here at this last minute but uh there's just this little bit here where it just you know catches your fingernail it should be smooth and it's, it's just a little bit, so. Planing end grain can be uh, fun. Not really. Um, but basically, you want to bring your plane in just a really shallow cut and come in kind of on an angle with it. And whatever you do... Do not follow all the way through to the other side because that's how you'll blow the you'll blow this grain right out the side you'll tear out so i'd go to about halfway right around to the middle and then once i get down this side down this is my lowest side once i get this down to my depth then i'll come around the other side and come from this side to the middle until we're nice and flat across again Perfect. Alright, we've got our box completely cut, dovetails cut. Uh, it took probably in total, if I added up all the time that I've worked on it, um, probably a little, uh, to be honest, probably almost five hours um, to do this. But everything's been cut by hand, uh, just as close as I could get it. Remember, this is the second time I've ever cut dovetails by hand. Um, I've never honestly even cut them by machine, so this is literally the second time I've ever cut dovetails. Um, but I'm very, very happy with how, with the, the turnout. Um, I would say 
The front wound up being my best side. They're only. So I would say the front ended up being my best side. I've got just the slightest little fingernail gap right there. Um, these will all just, you know, those will all swell up as soon as I glue it and just disappear. Um, this guy here is just a little bit, just a little bit proud, but I can plane that smooth. It sits flat. It's perfectly 90 degree flush. Um, the back side turned out pretty good as well. Uh, obviously I still have to sand everything. This side turned out really, really well. Um, I, I started to kind of plane this down a little bit just to smooth it out. Cause this was the first side we did where it was just standing up a little bit proud. Um, I'm going to have to replane everything, but, uh, this side turned out really well too. This is probably my worst, uh, tail or my worst pin right here. I had, I got a little too overzealous with the saw and went below my line here. And that, that just caused this gap to, to, to open up. But it is on the back. I'm not too worried about it. And I can also, I saved all my offcuts so I can get a little wedge in there. And once I get that in there, cut it flush and plane it smooth, you'll never even know that's there. So that, uh, I could not be happier with the outcome. Yeah, so that's the box. I, uh, like So far, we still have to do a bottom and we have to do a top. We're not gonna do that today. We're gonna do that in the next episode of building this because I'm. I'm this is taking longer, so it's turning into a series. So we're gonna make the bottom out of ash. Um, so stay tuned for the next, the bottom and the top are gonna be out of ash. Um, so stay tuned. I think it's gonna be a really nice uh, color difference, you know, between the two boxes. I think it's gonna look really cool. Also, I'm gonna be doing another review of these Harbor Freight chisels. I use these exclusively in cutting the uh, dovetails, I'll let you know if they worked well, how often I had to sharpen them. Um, if they cut well, did they? Did I still like them after using them? I've been using them for five hours, basically a week. Um, I've been using these things five hours over the course of a week. Um, but I will let you know, do I like them, do I not? So look for that video coming up soon. But anyway, uh, like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you on the next one.